Okay, guys, I'm back and the announcements are finished. Okay, so, um, so again, what do we do when we're dividing? We subtract exponents. We subtract exponents. We subtract exponents, as long as the bases are the same. Now, this case doesn't require, you know, with the same base. Okay, you'll notice that. With the same base here, but not with the same base here. This is the third of the big three, I call. Okay, and this is a power raised to an exponent. Okay, so that means you have a power, like 2 to the power of 5, and then you raise it to another exponent. It's like a power of a power, but it's not really a power because this is the base, but the base is a power, so the power is a base or whatever. So I just say it's a power raised to another exponent, okay? And so the rule for this is if you raise a power to an exponent, you multiply the exponents. And I know that's a pain in the butt because over here... When you multiply, you add. Over here, when you raise a power to an exponent, you multiply. So it can be a little bit confusing. The key feature here you'll notice is I have a base and I have two exponents. Whenever you have more than one exponent for every single base, you multiply those exponents. Okay? And that's something maybe you can take home with you, and I'll show you that situation as we go through a few examples. So here, a to the m raised to the power of n. So this whole thing to the power of n, I take the m and I take the n and I multiply them. Okay? So what does this look like? 2 to the 3 to the 4. So that becomes 2 to the 12, 3 times 4. And yes, that's a big number. It's 4,096, I believe. Okay? It's a big number. It is what it is but you multiply those exponents. Try to realize what this actually is if I take it in full terms. That's 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 3 times 2 to the 3. Again, an, ex an exponent is repeated multiplication. So I'm taking this and multiplying it by itself four times. So I'm going to have a 3 and a 3 and a 3 and a 3, which means I add those and then multiply. And what happens to 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3? It's 2 to the 12. So it's a shortcut version that gives you this shortcut here the multiply rule. Now, here I'm involving a little bit more, okay, because I have a base raised to an exponent, and then I have another base raised to an exponent. So I'm going to go in a couple of steps here. Again, doing bed mass, I should evaluate exponents before I multiply. Besides, we've got these multiple exponents here. We want to simplify those as much as possible before we have to add them. So what I do here is I go x, and I go to the 2 times 5, which is 10. That's this one, simplified. And this one, simplified. I go x to the negative 2 times 3, which is negative 6. Then I add those two guys together, 10 plus negative 6, and I get x to the 4. So it's a combo of an exponent raised to a power rule. That's the big number 3. And then, of course, the multiplication rule afterwards. Again, I do exponents first. And then I do multiplication afterwards, okay? So I'm using these rules together. And, of course, what you'll see here is I'm going to use all of the big three all together in one happy little circumstance, okay? So I start with exponent. Well, really what I do is brackets. This, in essence, is bracketed because when I divide by the denominator, I'm dividing by that entire expression. So my brackets are to simplify the numerator first, separate from the denominator, so I look at the numerator, I ignore the denominator, and I say, okay, a to the 2 to the 3. I've got to do exponents first, so that becomes a to the 6. And then I go a to the 2 to the negative 4. Well, that's going to become a to the, multiply those exponents, negative 8. Okay, again, you'll see a base, two exponents. A base, two exponents. That means you multiply. That means you multiply. A base and two exponents. You multiply. A base and two exponents, you multiply, okay? So that's the numerator simplified enough. I turn this guy into this guy and this guy into this guy. A to the negative two to the two. So now I'm ignoring the numerator. A to the negative two to the two. That's gonna be A to the negative two times two, which is a negative four. And I know I can do stuff with that afterwards. I'm leaving this all to the end. The negative exponents, the fraction exponents, I do the big three first until I get down to something nice and beautiful and simple, and then I worry about the other stuff. a to the negative 2 is just a to the negative 2 because there's no exponent outside here raised to, that it's raised to. Now, of course, I'm going to simplify still the numerator and denominator separately. Okay, they're already bracketed, so I've got to simplify the top 
different from the bottom, although you could technically do some canceling and stuff. We're not going to get into that a dichotomy of possibilities. Okay? Uh, so here I have a to the 6 times a to the negative 8. Here and we notice we've got one base, one exponent, one base, one exponent. So now what do I do with these two guys? Okay, I add them together and I get a to the negative 2. That's a negative 8 plus a 6, negative 2. Here I've got a to the negative 4 and a to the negative 2. It becomes a to the negative 6. And yes, I have multiple steps here. Now I'm finally doing my third part of the big 3, and that's the division part. What do I do with exponents? I subtract those exponents. And be careful, it's not negative 8. It's negative 2 minus minus 6. Negative 2 minus minus 6 is a positive 4. And I simplify to that final answer. Okay? If you can do this, you can do the big 3. That means, in essence, you're kind of a grade 9, level 4 plus student. Or you're a grade 11 student who's re reviewing what it was that you learned. There's also a couple of other ideas, which we've done over and over again. You do this in all the algebra that you do. And this is the power of the product. The, bit, the whole idea is this. Anything that's inside the bracket is affected by the exponent, because an exponent affects what it's immediately beside. The n is right beside that bracket. Because the n is right beside that bracket, it's only going to affect the n. Or sorry, it's, it's, because the n is right beside that bracket, it's going to affect the entire bracket. So what that means is this. A, B, anything multiplied together in here to the power of n means that I really basically take the A and raise it to the power of n and the B and raise it to the power of, the n, of n. And you've done these algebra expressions before, so this is nothing new to you. So if I have A, B to the power of 3, that means it's going to be A to the power of 3 and B to the power of 3, okay? If you prefer that A is 1, it, sorry, the, power, the exponent on A is 1, so it's 1 times 3, 3. And the exponent on B is 1, so 1 times 3 is 3. Okay? Here's another expression, a little bit more like an algebra question, okay, where I take the 3, and what I do is I take the negative 2 and I raise it to the power of 3. Now you've got to be careful and raise it to the power of 3. And then my A, that's to the power of 1, so 1 times 3 is 3. My B is to the power of 2, so 2 times 3 is 6. And my c to the power of 3, that's 1 times 3, which is 3. Okay? And then, of course, we probably better, you know, resolve what that negative 2 to the power of 3 is. Negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. The power is odd, so I know it's going to be negative. And then it's just 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. And then I have a cubed, b to the 6, c to the 3. Now, we're going to do more questions like this, so I'm not going to do any more elaborate questions for this expansion, but I do have some interesting stuff going on here. <clears throat> here I have a base raised to an exponent, so I'm going to go 2 to the negative 2, a squared to the negative 2 is a to the 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, b to the 1 to the negative 2 is b to the negative 2. And I bracket that whole thing and I do the other part. 2 to the 3, 2 to the 3. a cubed raised to the power of 3 is a to the 3 times 3, which is 9. b cubed, is b to the 1 to the power of 3 is b to the 3. Now we do some collecting of like terms. I'm going to multiply the 2 to the negative 2 times 2 to the 3, and I get 2 to the 1 adding those exponents because we're multiplying. a to the negative 4 and a to the 9, add those exponents, I get a to the 5. b to the negative 2 and b to the 3, I get b to the 1. Now, we don't usually include these 1s, so we go 2, a to the 5, b. In fact, including the 1s is bad form. Okay? So that's the big 3 plus the power of a product. Very, very useful exponent laws. Now I want to do sort of a, a, a quirk. It's kind of the same thing as the power of a product, but it's a power with a fraction or a rational base. Okay? And it's pretty much the same deal. What we see happening here, where we take everybody inside the bracket, and as long as the n is affecting the bracket, it's going to affect the b and the a. It's the same thing here. The n is going to affect the denominator and the numerator equally. So it's, in essence, the power of a product, sort of. 
Okay, and that it's the same philosophy and it's the same occurrence. And it's not a surprise because if I do repeated multiplication, I'm going to take, you know, if I, go, if I go 2 over 3 to the 5, I'm going to go 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 2 over 3 times 2 over 3. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, two, two, two that's 2 to the 5. 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 3, that's 3 to the 5. And so it's not surprising how this all works. Okay, so these rules seem like they're magic. They're not magic. It's just we don't have time to derive them. We have to trust that you know them. This is a review, and we have to just utilize them. So 2 over 3 to the power of 5, because the 2 over 3 is in the bracket, the 2 is raised to the power of 5, and the 3 is raised to the power of 5. And you could evaluate that if you want to, excuse my form, okay, and get 32 over... Uh, 27 times 9 is 243. Okay? But you don't have to evaluate. I'm, I want you to learn how to do this. Okay, not that the other part isn't important. And now we have b cubed over a squared raised to the power of 3. So what I do is I take my b cubed and I raise to the power of 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. Again, I have one base and two exponents. Another base, two exponents. So I multiply. 2 times 3 is 6, and I'm left with that scenario. Okay? So the exponent applies to the numerator and denominator equally. Everybody that the exponent's speaking to, it's applied to. Now, this is zero exponents, which is probably the easiest thing in the world. In fact, I've created a crazy question for us to do, and it's super easy. And the reason why is, if we look at this relationship, this is where we ascertain what the power to a particular base is. So, 2 to the 6, 64. 2 to the 5, 32. 2 to the 4, 16. What you'll see here is I'm dividing by 2 each time in this pattern. I continue to divide by 2. I continue to divide by 2. Okay? Because my 2s are decreasing in value. So 2 to the 6 is 64. 2 to the 5 is a half of that. 2 to the 4 is a half of that. A half of that. A half of that. A half of that. So what is 2 to the 0? If I follow this pattern and I keep on dividing by 2, and that's what I'm doing because the power is going down by 1, then this is going to be 2 divided by 2, which is 1. The other way to look at it is, how do I get a result like that? Well, if I take a result like 2 to the 2 all over 2 to the 2, that's equal to 2 to the 2 minus, uh, minus 2, which is 2 to the 0. So in a question, I've created a 2 to the 0. If you look at this this way, that equals 4 over 4, which is 1. So 2 to the 0 is 1. Or that looks like 2 times 2 all over 2 times 2. 2's cancel, 2's cancel. I'm left with 1 on the top and 1 on the bottom. 1 over 1, which is 1. So 2 to the 0, or anything to the 0 for that matter, is going to equal 1 because it's all going to cancel or divide out. So as a result, a to the 0 is equal to, not like a pattern, 1. So here, 3 over 4 to the 0. What is that? It's not like 3 to the 1, 4 to the 1. No, it's 1. If you want to look at it even more clearly, in essence what it is is 3 to the 1 over 4 to the 1, which is 3 to the 0 over 4 to the 0, but that's still 3 to the, 3 to the 0 is 1, 4 to the 0 is 1, so it's still 1. So you can go with this base, no matter how complicated it is, to the, anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. So here I've got this craziness, and I'm not going to simplify what's inside the bracket this time, because I notice this. The answer is 1. Anything raised to the power of 0 is... One. You could take that to the bank. So here's the same relationship again. Okay? Uh, so I don't have all the way up to 2 to the 6 because I wanted to cut down for some room on the note. But 2 to the 3 going down to 2 to the 2, that's 8 going down to 4, I divide by 2. 4 going down to 2, I divide by 2. Or 2 to the 2 going down to 2 to the 1, I divide by 2. 2 to the 1 down to 2 to the 0, again, I divide by 2, dividing by 2. So logically, what does this mean? That means that 2 to the 1, I'm still going to go down and I'm going to divide by 2. I'm not going to make it 0.5. I'm going to go 1 over 2. Okay? If I continue to divide by 2, it becomes 1 over 4. And I divide by 2 again, it becomes 1 over 8. Now, in this scenario, I'm showing you this relationship not because we need to rederive these exponent laws, because we have to understand this is an exponential relationship. We just haven't defined it as a function. 
okay, or as, a, as an equation. Okay? But these values show a relationship to each other. Now, how do I write 1 over 4 in expanded form using 2's as the base? Well, that's 1 over 2 times 2. How do I write 1 over 8 using the base 2? Well, that's 1 over 2 times 2 times 2. So basically what it means is, which is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 over 2 to the 1, which is 1 over 2 to the 3. What you notice is a negative power is just 1 over the same thing written as a positive power. Another way to look at a negative power is that it's my base of 2 over 1 to the negative 3, and I turn it into 1 over 2 to the positive 3. Okay, so however you look at it, whatever perspective you want to use, both of them are logic and sound and they make sense. So any negative exponent is in essence 1 over that to the positive exponent. So if you look here, 5 to the negative 4 is really 1 over 5 to the 4. Or it's 5 over 1 to the negative 4 which is equal to 1 over 5 to the 4. Now, 1 over 5 to the 4 and 1 over 5 to the 4 are exactly the same thing because if I raise this to the power of 4, I could raise it to the power of infinity. It's still going to be 1. So this and this are the same thing. Okay? I like to use this definition, that this is the same as this. So that is 1 over 5 to the 4. I find it more convenient. However, in a situation like this, if I did that, I would say 1 over 2 over 3 to the positive 3, right? Which would be 1 over 2 cubed over 3 cubed. And I'm going to keep them together in a bracket so we can visualize that it's 1 over this, okay? Which is 1 divided by 2 cubed over 3 cubed. Which is 1 times the flip. 3 cubed over 2 cubed, which is just 3 cubed over 2 cubed, which is basically taking this fraction and flipping it. So when I have a negative exponent, this is how I get down to the shortcut, which is just make the, the fraction a reciprocal, okay, in this case flip it, 3 over 2 rather than 2 over 3, that's what I do there, 3 over 2, and then I change the, positive, or the negative 3 into a positive 3. Okay? Let's go ahead and do an example here, and I'll show you another perspective that you can take with things. All right, so first of all, we got the big 3, and you should always use the big 3, and then worry about the negative exponents at the final end. Don't start turning this into 1 over 2 to the 5. You're going to blow your mind with a fraction over a fraction, all kinds of crazy stuff. So what you're going to do is this. You're going to say, okay, this is 2 and a 2, so I can add those exponents, 2 to the uh, negative 3 in the top, okay? In the bottom there, okay, I got some more stuff going on. Oops, I didn't realize that I had that exponent there. I made this especially clever because we have all three of the big 3. So the numerator can be simplified to 2 to the negative 3. That's no problem. Now, I'm going to leave this 3 to the negative, sorry, 3 to the negative 3 in here, because I do have exponents to do, exponents first, and then we multiply before I do this multiplication step. So I've got 3 to the 2 raised to the negative 2. And remember, this exponent only talks to what it's immediately beside. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Then I go 2 to the negative 3 in the numerator. And I go 3 to the negative 3 times 3 to the negative 4. Now they're multiplied. There's nothing else other than multiply. So I go 3 to the negative 7. Now, where I go with this sort of depends. I've got to find a piece of paper. Okay, where I go with this sort of depends. And the way it sort of, let me just write it down again. Because I'll show you a shortcut for this, which actually works all of the time, especially when they're written in fractions like this. And it's a nice way to discern and understand what negative exponents are. So I'm going to show you what, what this is really is going to be 1 over 2 to the 3. That's what this top is. Big, big fraction line, that's this fraction line. And then this guy is going to be 1 over 3 to the 7. Now, positive exponents I'm used to dealing with. And all answers should be written in positive exponents for mathematical form purposes. 
Okay, so we've got 1 over 2 to the 3 divided by 1 over 3 to the 7. Okay, now it's division. So remember, 1 over 2 to the 3 is multiplied by 3 to the 7 over 1. Multiply the numerators, 3 to the 7. Multiply the denominators, 2 to the 3. Now you can go ahead and figure out what 3 to the 7 is. I actually don't even know what that number is. I think it's like, I don't know, something big. Okay, whatever. Uh, but but this, this, from here to here is what we want to visualize because this is a perspective that you can take. And this is a perspective that I took when I was in high school and it worked quite nicely functionally for me. And that is when you have negative exponents for the wrong answer, or sorry, negative exponents in an answer and you can't use negative exponents. You know what you do? This tells me that two to the negative three is in the wrong spot. It's a negative, should be down here. This guy is a negative, it should be up here. And so what do I do? I take three to the negative seven and I put it in the top. And I take two to the negative three and I put it in the bottom and I write them both as positive exponents. Beep, boop, boop, done. Okay, so when I look at this question here, what I do and what I did when I was your age is I just said, hmm, well, that's in the wrong spot and that's in the wrong spot. So I just say, okay, so this guy should be down here and now he's positive.